Hey guys, I say hello from the stock market in the beautiful city of Frankfurt. We are here today to witness the first IPO of Intratech in the West. So I listen to this. I'm scouting digital and tech trends around the world in order to bring it to you. And I've helped numerous companies to set up ecosystems of digital products and services and to increase their reach with attention hacking. To be honest, if you would have asked me one and a half or two years ago, which would be the candidates to launch a multi-million euro a successful IPO, I surely would not have guessed that name. Meine Damen und Herren, wir kommen zum ersten Kurs. Ah, okay. Die deutsche Familie ich habe aber einen Gang gegeben. Der erste Kurs ist 12,30 Euro. Mein herzlichen Glückwunsch. Over the course of the last 18 to 24 months, the Deutsche Familienversicherung, the German Family Insurance, made their way into the international insurtech and insurance community and showed what they have been working on over the last decade. I remember an event-based customer relationship management core insurance system they pulled out of nowhere or an Alexa voice skill uh, and a lot of other interesting facts and figures uh, about their customer base and their growth. So um, I was really happy to see so many happy faces here because due to complicated market conditions it was not easy for the Deutsche Familienversicherung to launch this IPO but they pulled through and I think everybody who knows uh, the CEO Dr. Knoll is not surprised that they did it in the end. Over the last three months these are the three things I take away from the IPO of the Deutsche Familienversicherung. First, be bold. I think it takes a lot of guts as a small insurer with a hundred people to go out into the market and announce that you want to conquer the place of the multi-billion euro market leader Allianz uh, in the uh, supplementary healthcare insurance industry. The second thing I learned is you just need to do it. They internally modernized their whole um, company and then really went uh, um, outside to make the story known becoming part of the international insurance and insurtech uh, community with a lot of talks on stage, behind the scenes and um, I think it's very important to just do it, to just start, not be afraid. The third thing I learned is that the IPO is just the beginning. In the talks with a lot of um, people around the world, I have sometimes the impression that the IPO is the end of all dreams. You could really feel it here on the floor of the Frankfurt Stock Exchange that um, the IPO is just the beginning and that is also what uh, Dr. Knoll said. But let's have a look what the CEO has to say. We just saw you swinging the bell of uh, the Frankfurt Stock Exchange announcing and realizing your IPO. How do you feel? Well, I'm, uh, I'm pretty proud because, because this is, uh, I think, the most important uh, action in, uh, uh, in the history of, uh, of Deutsche Familienversicherung. Uh, if, you, if you found a company in 2007 and if you are able to bring this company uh, or, or to, to, to an IPO, I think everybody who is a little bit familiar with uh, what, what has happened uh, in the last minutes uh, can uh, is able to understand how proud I must be. Um, you mentioned in your speech um, in front of a lot of your employees that were also present uh, at the IPO um, the role of your employees. And you also mentioned now you guys are also shareholders of the company. Uh, what do you mean with that? Uh, first of all, I was uh, during the IPO, during the, 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 the action ringing the bell, uh, I was accompanied by all my employees and uh, I think this was the first time in the history of, uh, of the German stock exchange that that a, a, a IPO candidate was accompanied by all his employees. So second, 
Now I want to answer the, your, your question. Uh, uh, we gave uh, around about 35,000 shares to our employees uh, and uh, they had uh, the, the, the possibility to buy these shares for the, for the nominal, nominal price. Uh, so they uh, uh, earned uh, shortly after ringing the bell the difference between the nominal price and uh, uh, the actual share price. So it's, uh, it was, I think, a very positive thing for all my employees. I, I think maybe for the people not familiar with the difference, I think it was the difference between uh, 2 and 12.50 or something. Yes, so yes, it was like yes. a significant uplift for everybody, I yes, think. Yes. <laughs> two, two, and, two and a little bit above 12, yes. Cool. Um, so congratulations also to them, of course. Um, now you raised um, over 52 million euros. Um, what are your plans with that? Well, the, the, the plans are mainly to invest the money uh, 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 for, 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 for sales. Uh, uh, we, we, there are perfect uh, economic conditions in, in Germany. Uh, uh, the Deutsche Firm is superior in technique, in products, uh, uh, and we, uh, uh, we use a scalable sales. Uh, because of this, we want to spend uh, the money mostly for sales in order to grow. And uh, um, uh, and one figure is that we want to double the number of new customers next year. This is also something you announced at the InsurTech Connect, the largest uh, insurance and InsurTech conference on the world um, a few months ago, that you want to double your customer portfolio uh, in a very short period of time. And you and your company also have become a part of the international insurance and InsurTech um, movement community uh, at the forefront. Um, so will we see you after the IPO also uh, continue, uh, contributing to that? Yes, of course. Uh, first of all, I never said that I want to uh, double the, the, the customer uh, uh, portfolio. I want to double the number of new customers. Ah, okay. we, 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 we had 40,000 okay. customers in 2017. We expect 50,000 uh, new customers this year and we are, we are on track with this. And, uh, and, and next year I want to double this number. So we expect next year next year 100,000 new customers. Wow, very impressive. And as we know, you have also built and restructured your whole company that you're even uh, from the IT and organization are capable of, you know, digesting this sort of growth because I'm... Yeah, but we, we, we did this uh, uh, three years ago, so, yeah. so we, are, we are well prepared. So the last weeks and months have, pretty, have been pretty exciting in the positive and negative um, for you um, and also very, with a very positive end. My last question is, you have been a, and, and, not, and maybe not everybody knows this, but you have been a successful entrepreneur in different businesses um, and, and have um, had significant exits in the past. Um, how does it feel now from being an entrepreneur to being an employee again? <laughs> I don't, first of all, I stay as major shareholder at the company. I have not sold any single share. I did the opposite. I bought new shares uh, after after the, the IPO. So I am I am I, I personally still feel as an entrepreneur, and I, I and I will do my my job as CEO in this company as as an entrepreneur. So there's no difference. But uh, from the from the formal or legal point of view, you're right. I am. I am now an employee, but uh, I'm a special employee. <laughs> okay. Well, Dr. Knoll, thank you very much for your time. Enjoy your day and congratulations again. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for, for, for this nice interview. Hey guys, it would help us a lot if you could hit the subscribe button down there and to make us also grow here on YouTube. Thank you very much.